Welcome back and thank you for being here. This tutorial is one many of you have asked for, so here it is. I'm going to show you how to mod your Exile server with the Funcom dedicated launcher. This isn't your grandpappy's copy and paste content channel, folks. This is where real geeks live. So make sure you stick around to the end and I'm going to show you some troubleshooting tips for when things don't go quite right. Please make sure you smash those like and subscribe buttons and share this video with a friend. Now, I am going to assume that you have watched one or both of the Conan Exile server tutorials and this tutorial does not include any port forwarding. And some important things to note before we get started. Number one, lots of mods on a server take a long time to start up. Two. There is no need to put any files on the server. The launcher does that for you automatically. Three, clients do have to load the mod list text file and their mods manually. There is no automated process like in an official server because this is an official server. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go to Conan Exiles in Steam, of course, and then we want to go to our workshop in workshop you want to go to the top right hand corner left sorry left hand corner and go to steam settings and in settings we want to go to interface and under interface we want on the right check the box that says display steam url now we can see our mod ids much easier tell it okay and you'll see we have an uh, url bar now. All right, so we're going to scroll down through our mods and we're going to select a mod that we want to test. So we're going to pick Ink Art here. I think I've tested with it before. Pretty sure I have. I know it loads good. So so check out your mod, read the description, make check your dependencies, 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 dependencies. First thing you want to do is subscribe to the mod like you would subscribe to my channel and you'll see it automatically downloads to install to your Conan game but you also see up in the URL bar the mod ID so we want to copy that we're going to put it in our list of mods to test and from there we want to copy it to our Funcom launcher uh, all right, hold on. Let me put in a different number there. One of the important things you got to learn here is everything you do in the launcher has to be, you have to save changes afterwards. You'll see in the bottom right hand corner above where you start the server button is the save changes button. Every time you put in a new mod or make a change in this launcher, you have to save changes. All right, with that said, we're going to start our server with our new mod that we want to test or test load and you'll see that it finds our mod okay our game is up to date it's downloading the mod and we are looking for an exit status code zero when the mod finishes and you'll see your status code zero flash by and our servers running and everything's working this process is the process I use for every single mod I want to load on my server I highly suggest that you do the same take each mod put it in the launcher test it make sure it works that way it downloads if it works it downloads all the files that it needs so you can turn it on or turn it off as you need it without having to re-download a whole bunch of files Keep all of your mods in a list, comma separated, no spaces. And I'll show you here. We're going to see what it looks like when it starts several mods. So we're going to go back to our notepad. Since this is a good mod and our server's running and it seems to have loaded okay, let's go back to our uh, notepad put this mod in the list of our known good mods 
and then we will copy our known good mods list to our Funcom launcher into the mod list field and paste those in there and start our server. This also creates the mod list text that you need to send to your friends. I'll show you later so they know what mods to load and in what order to load them. Then you'll see it loads all our mods and it exits with a status code 0. It's what we want. And next we're going to sh I'm going to show you how to join a modded official server. Joining official servers today as opposed to a few years ago has gotten a lot easier when it comes to Conan Exiles. In the past when your mods weren't in the same order or it wasn't the same list as the server we used to get this error. And this was the bane of our existence when it came to Conan Exiles. Funcom, Steam, and Gportal have managed to automate this process so now when you go to join a server you join the pick your server join it and now it reads all of the mods you don't have you see it says okay so I have a couple of them already loaded and it's going to download and install all the other mods that it needs for this particular server so you don't have to do anything but this process does take a long while and this is how we join official servers now that are modded next we're going to cover how you and your friends are going to join your unofficial modded server Joining your modded unofficial server, the one thing you do have to remember, this is a manual process and does take a long time to set up. But once it's done, it's, it's great. It's easy to maintain. Our first step is making sure everyone has the same list of mods and in the same order. The process I like to use when I want to make sure everybody's on the same page is to copy the mod list.txt file from the server to my game and then make sure all the players who want to join my game have the same file loaded and the mods installed so that we don't get any connection errors. And this process is simpler than it sounds. So we want to copy our mod list text from the server. And I, my server path is in the description as well, so you help you find yours easier. So we want to grab the mod list.txt file from our server directory. And we're going to copy that and paste it to our game. And of course our game is where all the Steam games are. Program Files x86, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, and Conan Exiles. And then Conan Sandbox and Mods. I right click and paste it in there and I just replace it in the destination. Now everybody who wants to join your server will have to do this for every mod list you've created for your server. Now I want to talk about something that will inevitably hurt somebody's feelings. Mod load order and does it matter? In the case of Conan Exiles the answer is simple. Yes and no. In the mod list text that we created, this list is completely unsorted because it doesn't violate any of the rules that I myself have created for modding Conan Exiles. So the two rules are simple. RTFM, read the freaking mod and check dependencies, dependencies, dependencies. Read the freaking mod and check dependencies. Every mod will tell you where it needs to load and it will tell you if it depends on another mod. Rule number two, mods that modify core game files should load first. If there is any question about whether where you think you should load the mod, refer back to 
Rule number one. Now I want to talk about something that's probably the most important thing you can do when it comes to modding. Having best practices and troubleshooting skills. Understanding how important this is will save you a lot of headache later on. I'm going to show you my process, but you have to come up with what works for you. My process begins with reading, you know, RTFM, and testing mods, then recording the information for later on. If a mod fails, I want to know why, because if it's something that the file can't be found, the mod author could have been doing something. If it's uh, some type of TCP timeout error, it may have just been a bad day for the internet. But doing things in a best practice way every single time saves you so much troubleshooting later on. Troubleshooting. The first place you want to start troubleshooting is the Funcom Launcher. This is where you will receive your first error message or any indication that something might be going wrong. Even Funcom makes a note in their documentation that the light bulbs are not 100% foolproof, but if it's red, definitely an issue. What does this mean exactly? Well, it means that the light and the status code zero indicate that the mod it was downloaded, installed, and everything's okay. It doesn't mean that it is working in game. In game is a whole nother set of issues. To troubleshoot in-game, there's two steps. Step one, did we follow best practices? Have we cut corners? What did we do not do that we should have done? Does the mod install correctly? Well, a green light and status code zero says yes. Well, if those are all true and we didn't do any of those things, then we're going to move on to step two. In step two, what we need to do is we need to RTFM some more. We need to look at the forums. Are we the only ones having this problem? Are you the only one? that this has happened to you normally that's not the case so did we check dependencies 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 if we've done all those things then contact the mod author and tell them what issues you're having with the mod so that it can get fixed and that's it for this tutorial I want to thank you for being here thank you for sticking around to the end for crack mods and gaming I'm Lou the Picked, and happy gaming.